World Youth Skills Day is celebrated every year on 15th July and it's all about promoting awareness of skills acquisition in young people. Now, this year, the World Youth Skills Day takes place in a very challenging context here in Kenya. The COVID-19 pandemic has seen closure of a technical and vocational education training institutions, commonly known as ATIVETS, which are considered to be breeding grounds for skilled population in the country. And that's not the only problem. Key stakeholders in the industry have questioned the curriculum followed by the training institutions in Kenya. The issue of half-baked students being released into industry has been one of the continuous concerns you hear being raised in the job market. Uh, this has been mainly because a lot of the graduates who go into industry do not have practical on-the-job skills. A uh, lot of the programs have been first of all designed without industry input so the curriculums don't take into consideration the developments in industry and uh, a lot of the programs have also been delivered either theoretically or through sometimes outdated machineries and you find that technology in industry has shifted. In response to companies having to retrain fresh graduates, JAMA Development Agency, commonly referred to as GIZ, is piloting the cooperative or duo vocational training as an important ingredient in equipping youth with demand-oriented vocational skills for the labor market. The model we propose is actually quite different from the present Kenyan TVED model, which mainly presently work with industrial attachment. Ours is actually a real collaboration between the industry and the um, TTI. That means our um, training is based on a joint curricula and a joint training plan between the industry and the um, TTI. Um, I mean, plastically explained or a little bit simplified explained, uh, our trainees are for three, three months in the training institution, then they come three months to the industry, then they go three months in the training institution, and vice versa until they complete the course. This is the best thing that has happened to us because the students from the world go will be learning what the industry expects them to learn. So when they graduate, they will fit very smoothly to the industry. Initially, we were training for the industries without them even asking for the trainees. This model brings us the situation where the industry identifies we need you to train for us in these areas. Why have we allowed ourselves to get into such relationships with Germany through GIZ? Because theirs is a successful story. You take somebody in a class, you take a learner in a class for, if their course is for a year, six months they will be in class interacting with machines, interacting with how to operationalize machines, interacting with repairing of the same machines. Then, six months, you send them into what we call here in Kenya internships. That is an internship of a kind, it's an industrial exercise. Meet Henning Post, the head of training at Kron's a German packaging and bottling machine manufacturer which will be partnering with Kiambu Institute of Science and Technology KIST in providing industrial mechatronics trainees with practical industry skills at their manufacturing plant in Nairobi. I think this is the biggest advantage. You get basically a fully trained employee after this program, but you have also saved money. Because maybe, if you think about it, before, how was it? You employ a person, then you have to train him for maybe half a year, uh, maybe one year. And in this system, you get them very, very young, very motivated, and you really have a chance to, to make an impact. Rising youth unemployment is one of the biggest problems facing societies and economies in today's world. And Kenya has not been spared. It will therefore be very interesting to see how key stakeholders pick up this conversation of skills development, perhaps a sure way of changing the youth in Kenya from being job seekers to job creators. From the Kenya's capital, Nairobi, my name remains Elijah Mwangi.